Hi guys, James at Rampant Lime Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to head up towards Gothenburg once again. Jutebor, as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Got to get the Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing Gothenburg beers because it is just a channel tradition these days. And for this review, we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel many, many times before. I've had some great beers from these guys over the years. Mainly they're known for their IPAs, but I have had some very very good dark beers from them as well and it's one of those that we're going to have a look at today. So for this review then we are going to go to the Gamlestaden area of the city and we're having a look at another beer from Spike Brewery. So this particular beer is called the Doppler Effect. It comes in at 12% ABV and this one is an Imperial Stout. So this one apparently is double mash, double Costa Rican coffee, double Madagascan vanilla and double coconut as well. So um, yeah, I think this one will be a little bit of a beast. And as I said, I've had some very, very good dark beers from these guys over the last you know, over the last kind of two years or so, I think it was, uh, since I first encountered this brewery. So um, yeah, this beer was released as part of the Local Osmoska League Assortment for December of 2020. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to review this one before I went home for Christmas, but uh, you know, being an Imperial Stout, it will have lasted quite well, especially at 12% ABV. But yeah, double mash, double Costa Rican coffee, double Madagascan vanilla, and double coconut. I think this one will be a little bit of a beast but like I say this was one of three beers they released in January along with the Super Sharp Shooter which was our single IPA and then they had the Cold as Ice which was a double IPA both of them New England's but yeah really looking forward to trying this one hopefully it's another good beer from Spike I'm sure it will be and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so yeah let's see how we get on then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Spike Brewery before, there must be about 20 odd of them already and I'm sure we will add to that list in the fairly near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you, that's constantly being added to and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Spike Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So Spike Brewery, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in the Gamlestaden area in Gothenburg, Utebori, on the Swedish west coast. And the company was founded back in 2014 by Mats Westbury, Marcus Axberry and Martin Johansson. So all three had worked previously in the IT industry, but it's now only Matt and Marcus that are still active in the company, and they're now joined by David de Sourcy, who joined the company and became the CEO. Very nice guy, actually, and I have met him in person. Uh, but the brewer is Bernardo Hava. He comes from Brazil, and he trained in brewing at VLB in Berlin, which is quite a prestigious brewing school, actually. And he joined the company a few years after they were founded, uh, a little bit later on in 2017. But at the moment, these guys are producing around 250,000 litres of beer per year and apparently about 25% of that volume is used for like contract brewing uh, other breweries beers. I think quite a few breweries come in and do gypsy brewing in their facility as well. But the brewery itself can be found in the Gamlestaden area. It's actually an old slaughterhouse and there's like bullet holes in the walls and things like that from where the cows and the sheep and all of these things have been killed. So kind of interesting. Um, but they do have an on-site tap room there which opens up on Saturdays. They also serve food there sometimes as well. And I do recommend that if you find yourself in Gothenburg on a Saturday, go and check it out. If you have the opportunity, it is definitely worth it because you'll get some really interesting uh, beers coming out of there that you won't find through Sistembo Lager or whatever. Um, but at the moment they're looking at opportunities to build their own brewery and as of January 2021 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced around 100 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. But uh, yeah, most likely you'll find their beers in and around the, different va the various beer pubs in the Gothenburg area. Like I said earlier, mainly they're known for their IPAs. If you ever come across one of their business series IPAs then those tend to be very, very good. But like I say, they've got some really good black IPAs and uh, the Imperial Stouts always tend to be pretty special as well. But yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Spike Brewery for the moment. They're one of the Swedish breweries that I always keep a lookout for in the local Altus Moskalit uh, releases every month 
accuracy stimble agate so I would recommend that you guys do the same so uh, yeah as always say check out the brewery website if you want to learn more you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so yes let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then I'm very very curious about this one so as you can see the artwork on this one is lovely I think I'll probably keep this can to be honest with you I love beers that have the scientific names because of course I used to be a chemistry uh, physics and maths teacher studied a master's in chemistry and then a master's in astrophysics as well but um, yeah the Doppler effect is one of my kind of favorite things in physics so for those of you that aren't familiar with it basically um, the Doppler effect is an effect that arises when you have two objects kind of moving cl uh, closer to each other or moving further away from each other and of course you've got light waves and you have sound waves so if an object is moving towards you for example the frequency of the waves the light waves and the sound waves traveling between you the frequency increases so if it's a sound you get a higher pitch if it's uh, a light wave then it'll start to appear more blue whereas if you've got the opposite thing when it's moving further away from you the frequency decreases the wavelength increases so you'll get a lower sound or the um, object will appear more uh, red actually so yeah red shift and blue shift they call that when it comes to light waves and you know as I say lower pitch and higher pitch relative when it comes to sound but uh, yeah it's a really interesting effect actually I remember one time um, my dad investigates car accidents and I remember calculating for him once um, how fast you had to be travelling past a, a, lamp, a you know a, a traffic light for the red light to appear green and it was it was something stupid like 4 million uh, kilometres an hour, 6 million kilometres, I think 4 million miles an hour so about you know 6 million, 6.5 million kilometres or something like that so yeah it was just kind of um, you know, just craziness actually, but the Doppler effect, it's, it's fascinating, all about relative motion and all of these kind of things. But yeah, this is a beer review, not a science lesson, but science of course is pretty interesting. But as you can see, lovely artwork on this beer, 440 milliliter can. Um, it's, I think this one cost me about maybe 60 or 65 Swedish kroner, so to translate that, about 6 euros 50, maybe 7 dollars 50 American. And that will be, oh, 66, it'll be like maybe £5.50, something, £5.50, £6, something like that, sterling. So, um, yeah, 12, uh, 11% ABV, this one, a little bit of a monster, you know, toasted coconut, Madagascan vanilla, double Costa Rican coffee, uh, and, yeah, double mash. So, this should be pretty interesting. So, without further ado, let's get this guy out, and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. You can smell the coffee on that already. Lovely. So as I've told you previously, coffee beans are one of my favourite adjuncts to put into to beers. You know, they're pretty much as complex as the different hops and things that you can get. Um, so, you know, when it comes to coffee, we can probably get all of that in actually. It's not going to give much of a head. But um, yeah, when it comes to coffee, you know, you've got so many different variables at play. If you grow it in different regions, you know, you've got different water makeup and things like that. You've got different minerals in the water that are going to affect it. Different soil compositions are also going to affect it. But the the biggest factor I've heard with coffee beans is the MASL, the MASL, the meters above sea level. Apparently with coffee beans, the higher the altitude you grow them at, uh, the more likely you are to get these big kind of floral, aromatic and fruity flavours out of it. And you know, there's a whole host of these things. You can get more earthy coffee coffees, more floral ones, more citrusy ones, more kind of red fruity ones as well. You know, coffee beans are just, you know, fascinating. And I don't drink coffee. I actually don't drink coffee, but I love coffee beans in uh, imperial stouts like this. It's, it's quite strange. I just never got into uh, to drinking coffee, actually. But uh, yeah, fascinating truly fascinating uh, adjuncts to put into your beers and I've had some really great coffee stouts. It all started with the key and the Sidamo Dimtu from uh, Dugas Brewery in Gothenburg, another brewery that I really recommend you check out. I've not had too many beers with uh, Costa Rican coffee from what I remember. I've had Indonesian ones uh, in Japan, I've had you know, you know, know, Kenyan, Rwandan and a few, um, a few other African coffees from what I remember. I've had quite a few like Colombian and Ecuadorian coffees and things. I think Brazilian coffee was one recently as well that was interesting. So yeah, Costa Rican coffee is a little bit new to me. But yeah, as I said, this one has coconut, it's a coconut vanilla coffee imperial stout, double mashed, coming in at 11% ABV. As you can see, and as you would expect with this beer, it's poured a lovely dark sort of ebony rosewood colour. If we shine the light through this, there's very little in the way of, you know, um, 
light transparency coming through to this. You can see when we poured it, it only had a tiny, tiny little bit of foam on the top. I would describe that foam as being like a sort of mocha uh, colour. But yeah, there's just a few little wisps kind of sitting there in the middle of the glass, but it's got a little bit of a ring just around the edge. I mean, when it's 11% ABV, you're not going to get too much in the way of head out of this one. Wheat will also help it kind of... Um, maintain the head but it actually says on this one it doesn't say on the ingredients list that it contains oats or wheat so this one seems to be a 100% barley malt stout along with the adjuncts so that's quite interesting because normally the wheat would give you a little bit more head and maybe that's the explanation why it doesn't seem so kind of like murky hazy sort of thing but yeah regardless in terms of appearance there's nothing particularly surprising about this uh, this particular beer so yeah big 11% imperial stout not a lot of head on it. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Yeah, actually very, very nice. What I'll say straight away about this, this is not the most complex of Imperial Stouts that I've come across from a Spike before. It does come across as considerably more straight shooting, even with the coffee even with the coffee. Nothing wrong with that, you know, sometimes simplicity is best with these beers. But yeah, this is definitely not the most complex Imperial Stout I've come across from um, from Spike in terms of its aroma. But that's not a bad thing. As I say, these guys are very capable with this style, so I do have high hopes for it. So let's focus on the coffee beans. So for me, the coffee that's in this one, it's actually a little bit more like a subtlety rather than kind of taking the four, if that makes sense. But then when you've got three adjuncts in this, that kind of makes sense. You don't want one of them to be kind of over dominant. But yeah, the coffee coming out of this one for me strikes me as being, you know, it strikes me as being quite, um, you know, a nice kind of smooth earthiness. There's a little bit of floral character to it as well. It's got a little bit of kind of floral aromaticity. Um, and it's just got a wee bit, it's got a wee bit of a kind of chocolatey note to it as well. Um, but I think that's probably the malts to be honest. But it does smell like quite a dry, earthy coffee. Nice little bit of floral aromaticity and perhaps just a little bit of a kind of red fruity note out of it. Like a sort of plummy, raisiny kind of thing. And that's only the coffee bean. Remember, coffee beans can add a hell of a, you know, a hell of a complexity to beers like this. But yeah, the, the coffee note in this one, I think, is really, really nice. But underneath this beer, you can smell that double mash. You know, um, double mash imperial stouts are just crazy. You know, concentrating these sugars and things like that. It's just, it's just crazy. It really is absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, um, you know, for for this one, you can smell. It's got a lovely big kind of smooth backbone there. I mean, you do get a little bit. For me, there is a little bit of a kind of brown bready note to this one, like a sort of well fired bread crust. There's quite a bit of that coming out of this beer. Absolutely. Um, so quite a little bit of um, yeah, quite a little bit of a kind of well-fired bread crusty sort of thing. I mean, I think there will be a bit of special bee in this or, you know, perhaps um, like a Vireman malt. Vireman would probably work quite well with this one, one of these carafa malts that they do. There's quite a few different varieties of that, of course. So it does have a bit of the well-fired bread crust. It's got a bit of that almost rye bread, brown rye bread type quality to it, which is quite nice. But there is a good little bit of a kind of toasty well-fired brown sugar in this one. I would describe it as like a well-fired caramel rather than being a big oily treacle molasses sort of thing. Definitely like a sort of toasty caramel. Nice chocolate, you know, in this one. I would say, you know, about 60-70% cocoa perhaps. Not overly dry. It does have a wee bit of that powdery note to it though, which is interesting. But yeah, nice little bit of... Um, a nice little bit of vanilla for me. A nice little bit of a kind of oily vanilla. And you also have... Um, you also have a little bit of that kind of coconut note there, but I think the coconut really does take a back seat in this one. For me, there's quite a lot of the vanilla coming out. I think the vanilla and the coffee are a little bit more obvious than the, the coconut, but it's a lovely malty, adjuncty type um, type quality in this one. I really like how that um, how that goes together. The malty side of this beer, I think, is, um, is very, very nice. So, um, yeah. It's pretty good, I have to say it is pretty good. Um, yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, not too much to report on this to be honest with you. Um, nice little bit, I would say there's a nice little bit of earthiness in there. Um, there is a little bit of earthiness. Um, some um, nice little bits of floral aromaticity, wee bit of grassiness. But again, when this is an imperial stout, especially an adjunct imperial stout like this, you're not going to get too much in the way of hoppiness. It's just a little bit of grassiness, as I say, wee touch of floral quality, and a good little bit of earthiness. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what you would expect. Oh, we've got a few wee drippies. There we go. 
there we go. Yes, stick that back up. But yeah, um, yeah, the I would say on the fruity side of things, this one it is kind of what you'd expect. There's a good little bit of a juicy plum in there. There's a wee touch of raisiny sharpness. Quite a little bit of a kind of figgy, datey. Uh, yeah, sort of. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of cakey Christmas puddingy sort of thing to it. But yeah, sharper raisins, juicy plums, a little bit of a kind of cakey, you know, sort of pruny sort of thing underneath. And then you've got these black currantly blackberry sort of things. There's quite a few hops that could be, you know, it could be Endeavour from England. It could be, you know, Bramlings Cross. It could be, um, you know, Northern Brewer from Germany, which is popular in Doppelbox. Eureka from the States. Uh, Summit, I think, is quite a popular one to use in these as well. Magnum, I think, can be used in these as well. Cascade, there's quite a few different hops that you can use in these big Imperial Stouts, but definitely a nice kind of uh, quite juicy red fruity character coming out of this one, which is what you'd expect from the style. But yeah, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. We're going to taste this beer now and see how we get on. So let's go for it. Awesome. Um, yeah, lovely stuff. And I should say skull as well, I forgot. But yeah, the Doppler effect, 11%. Uh, double mash, double <laughs> double coconut, double vanilla, double Costa Rican coffee stout. And I'm just going to say straight away, this beer is really, really good. It's definitely got a lovely kind of straight shooting type vibe to it. But it's really, really solid. Um... Yeah, this is very, very nice. Um, the coffee is definitely a little bit more dominant in the flavour than the aroma would have you believe, but it works very, very well. I mean, if you're a fan of the, the key and the Sidamo Dim 2 that I mentioned earlier, you are going to enjoy this one. So take a little bit of time with that. So, yes, let's um, try and break down the flavour of this one then. So straight away with this beer, in the middle third of your palate, you've got that nice toasty, well-fired bread crusty thing I was talking about in this beer. That either has to be Special B or it has to be, you know, one of the Carafa malts in there. Maybe a mixture of both, who knows. Um, but yeah, on top of that roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crusty sort of thing, you've got a nice bit of a kind of almost German rye bread, German brown bread sort of sweetness there that sits on top of that. Then as you reach the border between middle third and back third of your palate, you've got a real almost kind of black malty dryness to the beer. You've got a lot of that. But then as you go on to that back third of your palate, some of the roasty, toasty qualities kind of linger there. If you go towards the very, very back of your palate, it, it does have a real roasty, toasty kind of kick to it. But you get more and more, I think the breadiness on that back third of your palate just almost thickens up a little bit and kind of sits there. So I really like that about how... Um, about how this beer goes together. It's got a lovely, um, the, the backbone of this beer, again, is very straight shooting, but it really serves the beer really well. Now we can talk about the adjuncts, because I think we've covered the the, uh, the, the the backbone of the beer quite well. There's one one thing I should also say, there are, if you go to the front corners of your palate, then diagonally back, you will get one or two little woody elements to it, and likewise, if you go to the centre of your palate and then just move forward, you will pick out one or two little nutty elements in there. So, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. let's focus on the adjuncts then. So if you start at the back of the palate, as I say, it's got a bit of a thicker kind of brown bready note. And as you come further forward and you reach that border region, the thickness just drops away. And then it comes out a little bit more as you go further forward. But you've almost got like a kind of layer. The coffee sort of sits in a layer just and almost kind of helps the beer just smoothen off kind of gradually, if that makes sense. For me... The coffee actually has quite a bit of a roasted earthiness. It smelled in the aroma as if it was going to be a more smooth earthiness. But yeah, it's got quite a roasty, earthy quality to it, um, the coffee in this one. But you do get a good little bit of floral aromaticity to it. But in a wee touch of a kind of red fruity note, maybe a wee hint of citrus as well. The citrusy side of the coffee wasn't so obvious in the aroma. But, um, you know, the coffee sort of sits, it kind of sits... Um, if you go about halfway from the middle third of your palate to halfway into the back third of your palate, the coffee flavours just kind of gradually come out over that. And it's a wee bit citrusy towards the kind of middle of the palate, then it gets a little bit more red fruity, and then further back it starts to show its more kind of roasty, toasty, earthy characters. And somewhere in the middle, that's where you're getting the kind of aromatic notes. So the coffee region of your palate does have quite a bit 
of diversity to it and I do like that about it. But yeah, um, sitting between the breads and the kind of coffee layer, that's where you're getting, pardon me, where you're getting some of the chocolate. That's where you're getting the chocolate and the sort of slightly brown sugary notes there. So for me, again, it's about a 60% kind of cocoa chocolate. You're getting that just sitting on top of the brown bread there. Then there's a sort of toasty brown sugary note. I would say the brown sugars come out a little bit more kind of the further you go into the aftertaste. Um, but in the very, very centre of your palate, you've got a quite sweet kind of caramelly note coming out of the beer. Um, so, yeah, you've got a really nice kind of sweetness coming out of this beer for sure. Absolutely. So yeah, I think the more that you drink of this beer, the slightly sort of sweeter it gets. But on the front half of that middle third of your palate, that's when you start to get the vanilla. You start to get the, the kind of more oil. It's I hesitate to say oily. It's almost a little bit creamy or something like that. But you get these nice kind of slick vanilla notes on that front half of the middle third of your palate. The coconut does come across as being quite toasty, but you really get the coconut kind of sitting in there with that sweeter side of the, the adjunct malty backbone of the beer in this one. Um, so yeah, those flavours come out a little bit more on that front half and they are a little bit sweeter actually. So I mean, I really like I really like how everything goes together in this one. So yeah, everything in this beer gets a big um, thumbs up for me on the malty side of things. And it's so critical to get that malty part of the beer and the adjunct part of the beer right. And you know, Spike have absolutely done that with this one. So yeah, take a little bit of time and just focus on that. I would say it's it's really nice done. But this is definitely like a sort of, you know, it is a coffee stout, but it's got the same sort of vibe as like a Russian Imperial. It's like a very toast, it's like a very old school, very toasty kind of stout. A rob no, that's a robust porter. You could say a Russian Imperial stout. If you like your Russian Imperial stouts, I think you will quite enjoy this one. But yeah, let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer. And again, this is quite straightforward. Back corners of the palate, you've got a nice kind of quite bitter earthiness to the beer. It smoothens out a little bit as you come further forward. You might get one or two little herbal notes out of this. I do get the impression that there's that there's a little bit of English hop in this. I think it might be a combination of English and American hop. It could be a little bit of fugo that's in here because it does have a wee bit of that almost ashy type quality. I'd love to know what hop it is. But yeah, good bit of earthiness that spreads about halfway forward along the sides of the tongues. As, uh, as on the side of your palate, I should say. But as you reach the front corners of the palate, there's this, this distinct little bit of floral quality there. Then around the very front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy. But there is a wee, there is still a wee touch of zestiness to this. But remember, as you age this beer, it's an 11 percenter, which so you can age it a little bit. You know, as you age this one, the hoppy notes will drop out a little bit and kind of mellow out. So this one, for me, I think this is only, does it say, when it was put in the can, I think it's saying it was the... Mm, that doesn't make sense, that number. So I don't know, I don't know when this has been canned. But I would guess that this has only been in the can maybe three months, something like that. So yeah, it's still going to be pretty fresh in that sense for an Imperial Stout. So still quite a bit of hoppy character in this, but that would fade over time. But let's focus on that front third of your palate then. As I always say, the front third of your palate is where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, what I'll say is on that border region between middle third and front third of your palate, you do have a bit of that kind of toasty, well-fired, cakey sort of thing. Then underneath that, underneath the fruit, the oily fruits, you've got that it's like the well-fired edge of a chocolate brownie. It's kind of like that. And then on top of that, you've got these big oily fruity esters. Let's kind of pick these out then. So when you take this beer in, definitely a nice little bit of a kind of juicy plummy note to the beer. I wouldn't say this one has a raisiny sharpness to it. I would say it's more of a kind of juicy oily plum. And that sits at the back of that front third of your palate. And that just kind of... That just kind of... Um, dries out a little bit the further forward you go. But then, yeah, as you move further forward um, on this one, you start to get, you get a little bit more um, of a kind of juicy figgy note to the beer. You definitely get a little bit of that. Um, and then as you reach the front half of that front third of your tongue, there's the more, there's the juicy kind of black currant sitting underneath, but then you get more of the oily and sweet blackberry sitting on top of that the further you go into the aftertaste. So in my opinion that works really well. The fruity side of this beer again is very nicely done but it's quite you know, it is, it is what you would expect for this kind of style, to be honest with you. There's nothing really surprising about this beer. It's one of these ones that's just really well executed, actually. When it says it's double mash, it gives you the thickness you'd want. When it says it's double coffee, it's got a good coffee kick. You know, the vanilla 
and the uh, the coconut I think work together quite well as well actually. So it's just it's just a really nicely executed beer I have to say. I like how this one um, pieces itself together. So yeah, lovely flavour to this one as I say, like a Russian imperial stout, quite a kind of roasty toasty one I would say. Um, so yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then to round off the review, what are we going to say about that? So yeah, I would describe this beer, it is pretty full bodied, quite a slick stout in fairness as well. So there's a good bit of oiliness to it and again it is, it's quite slick I think is the best way to describe it. But yeah, on the bitterness side of things, I think this has got to be you know an 80 IBU stout at least. It does have a good bit of better kick to it, both from the earthiness of the hops and from the kind of roastiness of the malt, the carafa, special bee, whatever it is that's in there, and also about the coffee. There's quite a bitter kick to this beer, let's just say that. Good little bit of bitterness to it, which I think is very, very nice. But then, yeah, you've got a good little bit of sweetness in the malt base in here, which I really like, um, and you've also... So, yeah, good little bit of sweetness. You've got a good little bit of... Um, how would you say... Um, You've got a little bit of kind of dryness and stuff in the middle of your palate as well. So it's, it's well balanced. Smoothness, dryness and a bit of sweetness in the malt base there. But the fruits are really nice and kind of... Um, they've got a bit of juiciness to them but they come across as quite oily and slick in a way as well. And that just adds to the mouthfeel of this beer. But like I said overall, this one, it's a coffee stout obviously. But it's got a nice kind of Russian imperial stout type vibe to it. So I think that kind of sums it up quite nicely to be honest with you. So another solid, solid beer from a Spike Brewery and I'm not surprised in the slightest about this one. I think it's um, it's really well executed and that's what we've come to expect from Spike Brewery um, over the years. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. I think that's a really good point to um, to leave this beer review at. So yeah, this one was the Doppler Effect, an 11% coffee, coconut, vanilla, double mash, Imperial Stout from Spike Brewery in the Gamla Standing area in central Gothenburg. Just a beautifully executed beer this one and I'm glad I was able to review it for you here on the channel. So let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Spike Brewery. We will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the very near future. Um, I do have some beers coming in February, I think, from these guys, if I remember rightly. But in the meantime, the Doppler effect... 11% from Spike Brewery, just awesome stuff. If you get the chance to try this beer, I don't think you'll regret it, particularly if you enjoy a good Russian Imperial Stout. Thanks again for watching, check out all the social media, check out Spike Brewery, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Slanjut, Skull, cheers, and make sure you check out this beer.